This is Internet Marketing. Hello and welcome to the Internet Marketing Podcast, formerly known as the Site Visibility Podcast, produced by the team behind Brighton SEO. I'm Kelvin Newman and in today's episode I'm joined by Matt Greenwood and Nabil Tavernier and we'll be discussing what might be missing from your SEO analysis. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm really excited to have two amazing guests joining me today. Um, we're going to be talking about SEO analysis. That's kind of quite a broad topic and I think it's going to be an interesting one. Um, I think that there's one of the things that's really always appealed to me when I got into search engine marketing and particularly search engine optimization is this kind of ability to or need when working on SEO projects to look at and understand the market, the um, websites, um, competitors, you know, your performance and all of these areas. And I, it's always an area I found really, really interesting. So I was really excited when we're kind of thinking about well, what can we do a podcast episode on? Um, I was really excited to kind of put SEO analysis in there because it's a topic I find really interesting. And I hope many of you will already be interested too. And if it's not, it will be an area that I think by the end of this episode, you can have some really interesting ideas to think about. So joining me today, I've got two really exciting guests. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. I always feel a bit silly on some podcasts where it's kind of like, I then read out their biography and all of that kind of thing. So I think it's best if they give kind of the elevator pitch of who they are and uh, how they came to work in search marketing and some of the areas of interest around SEO analysis. And then we'll dive into a few questions. But Matt, are you all right to go first on that in terms of your introduction and the, the whistle stop tour of who you are and how you came to be talking to us today? Sure. So my name is Matt uh, and I am an SEO manager at Reflect Digital. We're sort of a multi-channel agency who deliver for clients uh, across all sorts of different regions and uh, areas and that kind of thing. I got started in SEO about five years ago uh, by sheer happenstance. I moved from Brighton to Bath without a job, needed one quite desperately because rent was high. And uh, luckily, about five minutes walk away was uh, the office of Future. So big publishing house, got started there on their sort of graduate uh, program, developed up from there and immediately was like, okay, this is my thing. I never used to like spreadsheets, but now that's, yeah, very much became sort of data analysis, the sort of technical SEO uh, assistant, as it were. Um, and since then, it's just been a constant sort of push in that direction, really. So I've worked as a pipeline engineer, data engineering analyst, um, all sorts of different things, but always with that focus on uh, SEO. Uh, so yeah, being an SEO manager now, it's always uh, an interesting ride uh, to be so. Yeah, close. yeah, yeah. A lovely bit of the world as well. Obviously, like yeah, you know, Brighton. Obviously, you know, I'm fan of that. Um, you know, <laughs> um, you know um, a mission of um, whatever it is where it's kind of like yeah, I've got an interest in that. Uh, but yeah, Bath's a lovely part of the world as well, and obviously, like got quite a burgeoning, burgeoning. That maybe does it disservice, but like a fairly substantial publishing and digital media and the technical you know marketing industry there hasn't it really Some yeah time. huge huge i mean uh, future was set up in the 80s it's gone global since then but there's loads of other sort of smaller startups medium startups i mean you've got people who are huge but performing out of a relatively small city which is sort of makes it quite dynamic and an interesting place to work really cool and uh, nabil tell us a bit about how, yourself and your kind of journey and story Thank you so much for inviting me to this podcast, first of all. And uh, yeah, my name is Nabil. I am originally based in Stockholm at the moment. And uh, I have been working at Electrolux uh, Group uh, as a technical SEO manager. I have started very recently here. Over the years, I have been working with different agencies in the past. And I have also had experience working with clients. Before uh, joining Electrolux, I was part of IKEA team and the global ikea team in the seo and yeah i have uh, experience working in dubai with some small to medium agencies now i've been uh, working in sweden for about six years and i've been doing seo uh, as far as i can remember since the days of demos and all those spammy linking things when <laughs> they existed um, but yeah in the beginning when i started i was just mainly building links to different websites and over the years i have gotten myself into a different uh, situations and positions such as paid media also analytics and then over the years i have uh, gained some experience working with data big data uh, learning some excel and then learning some big query and all that stuff 
uh, yeah, that's me in a nutshell. So, yeah, some really interesting organizations there as well. I mean, yeah, that's, that, that's the, the iconic Swedish company, isn't it? IKEA as well, and that, that experience there as well. So I uh, got uh, like a, only because it's occurred to me because I was getting pulled up on it yesterday. So I went to IKEA last weekend and inadvertently, um, I might, you can't see it here, but I've got a really yellow coat and a really blue hoodie that I was wearing and also wearing a, re a yellow and blue hat. And like, um, my kids were absolutely mocking me because I looked like I was a member of staff, which is obviously fine. But yeah, it was like kind of like, I, no one came up to me and asked like, where's the Calax? But uh, certainly I felt self-conscious that I'd inadvertently dressed in the company colors from my um, tour around the store, which made me feel a little bit um, self-conscious. But yeah, so, uh, so I'd love to dive in really. It's like, uh, you know, SEO analysis, the kind of use of SEO data to improve your marketing is a, a big old area really. But I'd be interested to kind of get since I'll come to you, Matt, first, if that's all right. And kind of ask you, you know, what some of the think, you know, some of the types of analysis project that you've been involved in recently around search marketing that you know potentially could act as an inspiration for people who maybe are, you know, because I think it's always interesting to see the analysis other people are doing because if you've not thought to do it, it might not be on your radar and it might not be, you know, you know, kind of it's this inspiration thing. So I think often quite powerful in in data analysis and you know dealing with information like that. Definitely. Yeah. And I mean, I think you're right. Analysis as a word is just so broad that it can mean scrolling through Google, directly looking at things up to the most complex scripts the world's ever seen doing stuff that no human understands. So I think it, the key for me in terms of like working on an analysis project is sort of understanding the scope and the value of it. And the biggest thing that I've always seen with data is, is the connection. So how can you take these sort of isolated groups of uh, data and stick them together in a way that generates new insight by being able to see both at the same time and sort of interwoven. So for example, if you were looking at uh, performance of a site, super basic, you can look at your rankings, you can look at uh, traffic, you can look at impressions, the sort of isolated metrics and actually the real integration of that between so you've got SEMrush, Search Console, uh, Analytics, all of these different things. Putting them into one place is a really, really valuable task. So it's something that we often talk to clients about in terms of not just reporting, but like, how do we decide what we're going to do? We're going to actually look at this sort of holistic view of that data and then analyze the sort of set as a whole rather than individual things and get too focused in on one particular metric. Mm. And I think that's interesting, isn't it? It's one of these things that's very easy to lose sight of in the process of like if you're in a routine you know you might be working brand side you might be working agency side and yeah you're talking about what like reporting is a really good example of that like you know reporting might be the purpose of reporting isn't to generate the report right it's to you know generate some insight um an observation or something like that but ultimately it's about to respond to, to create action and that reaction to have an outcome right that's the it's easy to lose sight of that sometimes isn't it now, Bill, is there kind of like projects that you've worked on recently that you found uh you know the types of analysis that you know are, are useful to do or, or or things that you've been looking at in terms of yeah um pulling data or observations out of of um of organizations or data sets uh yeah uh actually uh the way i see it uh, when you are working for a big brand it's um it's a two two uh, two sided coin actually. So uh, the one side is you are looking at a brand from your SEO perspective, but then there is the other side how consumers are interacting or looking for something which is related to your brand. So a lot of times as an SEO specialist, we are very focused on doing our uh, traditional you know keyword gap analysis etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but then behind the scene there is, there is a lot of data somewhere sitting in your uh, in your customer's mind as well. Uh, sometimes you find it through your internal search engine. Sometimes you find it through your competition or market trends. So yeah, we sometimes we sometimes do uh, these kind of projects as well to to you know expand our range of products and expand our range of research when we are working with different stakeholders in the organization. Uh, because we, as a obviously we are human beings and we have certain limitations to think, so uh, we cannot go beyond. And that's where we look at different data touch points uh, to, to, to get more uh, ideas on maybe this could this could be a content created in our existing range or maybe this could be an informational page create, created created. Mm. Uh, yeah. And yeah, so is that something you've done Matt, where that kind of like using it for content purposes? Have you, have you found like examples or approaches that you've gone to in terms of like, you know, if I suppose 
maybe I'll frame this in a slightly different way, which is to say, okay, um, I'm coming to both of you with a, we would like to add more content to our website. We've got this resource. We've got like a great copywriters or team of content, um, you know, marketers in various shapes or forms, but we've got no idea what to, what, what the, what they should be working on. So kind of like, if I was, if you had that kind of virtual brief or that virtual challenge, how would you go about kind of trying to, you know, come up and use a data driven approach to, you know, to turn, you know, influencing a content strategy like that. Sure. Yeah. I mean, immediately split it into two work streams, right? You take the one, which is what have you actually got? Where are you now? Understand sort of the performance of the existing site. Do they have any content that ranks? Where is that? And once you've got that sort of picture, you can easily see gaps there most of the time in great. If a consumer wants to know a bit more about this particular service, how would they do that? Do we have content around that that supports it, helps build that journey? And then the other part of the work stream really is about looking at competition, because if we're looking at it from an SEO perspective, we're seeing rankings as sort of the outcome of any work that we do for that content. And you're never alone. You're at minimum surrounded by nine other companies doing stuff to try and attract those consumers. So understanding A, the section of sort of the market that they're going after, is it the same as some competitors that they think they're going after? Can you see obvious differences between the sites in terms of quality type content topics, that kind of thing? Um, B, I think you need to look at actually where is the gap across the sector? Can you find a USP? Can you find content that no one has, but you think actually it's really valuable and the data supports that it's got search volume? Uh, so I think those are the ways that I would sort of initially target that. And Nabil, any kind of different bits to that or extra bits that you'd add? Or is that a quite similar process to how you go about sort of like that content brief where it's like, okay, we want you to tell us what to produce? Yeah, I think Matt has already summed it up very well. I would just like to add one thing here is that, I mean, from a, from a traditional data analyst and an SEO analyst, the difference is SEO analysts on top of being an analyst, they are also an opportunist as well. Um, because data analysts can find you data and gaps maybe, but SEO sees the opportunities as well. And that's an extra thing that uh, we as an SEO do uh, based on different uh, data touch points as well. And based on what you already have for your website and what your competitors are doing maybe, and what the industry trends are, that's where an SEO minds comes into the game. Yeah, and any uh, this goes to both of you. Really. I don't know who, if anyone even wants to go first, but are there any specific tools or methodologies that you might use for monitoring or analyzing or kind of understanding your competitors? That ones that your kind of touchstones tools or or the, the 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 places you go to for that kind of insight? I mean, I'm immediately biased, but I think understanding data in a way that you can manipulate it is always sort of top of the line for me. So Google Sheets is my go-to. If I can get all of these disparate data sources into Google Sheets, I can then start processing, hacking away, mixing things together. So it's it's the fundamental tool that I use every single day and is brilliant in terms of a sort of a data source for that kind of thing. Um, I find like Systrix is particularly useful for seeing like overall performance of a site. Um, and just recently they've started rolling out some interesting stuff around subdomains and sections of site that you can actually drill down even further in terms of visibility. So even just as that sort of top layer of how your competitor is performing, put monograph in Systrix, visibility index out and yeah, go from there. And Nabil, because you were talking about kind of big query and big data is like, what's the kind of threshold in your mind in terms of like from that, because obviously Google Sheets is you know, the huge value in that is its ubiquity, it's kind of familiarity, it's, you know, it's got like that kind of Excel, which is permeated everyone's kind of, you know, thinking of how we talk about data analysis, but, but taken up a level in terms of all of the functionality and being, you know, web first rather than kind of like a, you know, uh, a, a, like an application first kind of things. But yeah, at what point does it go that look, this is too, too much for Google Sheets, you need to be kind of like, uh, take it, any advice for people who might be starting to get towards that point or um you know because it's quite daunting i mean I mean personally i'm a yeah i've come to this i was a you know more from a journalism background than a like a web development background all that type of thing and yeah like it it could be quite daunting some of these kind of like even even google sheets might feel a bit daunting to some of our listeners but you know what's the kind of like tipping points or threshold or advice that you've got to people who uh, might be getting you know nearer the 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 edge the edge of 
Google Sheets and the like? Yeah, I think if you are if you are managing a small website, small to medium sized website with a few thousand pages, I think it's doable in Google Sheets or Excel. Uh, but for me, the tipping point has been when my Excel starts crashing. Uh, that's a signal for me to move on to something more scalable and uh, more efficient. Um, plus, on the, on top of that, with the so much um, so many APIs available as of today, you can automate a lot of those things. Um, let's say SEMrush has an API for keyword extractions and keyword search volumes and gap analysis. So based on uh, if you if you can do some Python scripting, maybe JavaScripting or something else, you can export a lot of data with the help of API and store in a massive database and then eventually use that data to make more data driven decisions for your business. Mm. Yeah, I think that's it. Is it is that kind of we're blessed in a way that sometimes it's easy, easy to forget. Like it's that, you know, that like in the days of the, not even that distant past, to be completely honest, where, um, you know, you'd be reliant on the using the user interfaces of a, uh, various different tools or platforms, maybe, yeah, you know, you might be lucky and be able to download a CSV um, of a kind of an output of a thing, which is kind of very different to that now. It's, you know, Matt, are you playing about much in that kind of space or do you kind of like, it tends to be sometimes being rough and ready to the approach. Or, uh, you know, where are you on that kind of API? I, I am the largest proponent of automation in any room. I think anything we can do to sort of move from that sort of data gathering and data analysis bit into actually, like you said earlier, the insights, like what does this mean? What will we actually do with it? So yeah, I mean, pipeline um, work is, is fundamental to I think huge amounts of uh, certainly larger publishing SEO and sort of if your business is beyond the point of <laughs> crashing in Google Sheets, that that's where I'd look next. And BigQuery, absolutely brilliant way of getting started. But as you say, it's very intimidating to actually move into that space. But I think there's a load of different tools nowadays that you can actually start moving into it without necessarily having to deal with the full weight of it. So stuff like Zapier, um, if this, then that is sort of really early start things. But I think even in um, Search Console, it's worth trying out the bulk data export. Um, so there's an inbuilt tool that allows you to push everything out to BigQuery. Um, and I think the benefit to that, especially in sort of the SEO world where the more data, the better, the more accurate, um, is you can just get so much more out of it in sort of the online web app. You've got a thousand URLs. There's no limit to the BigQuery stuff. So it's pure, unfiltered, scalable big data, um, but without necessarily having to generate it yourself. Yeah, and, so, and one of the big trends, it certainly feels like there's been over the last maybe 12 months, certainly the last six months, um, that the, the frequency and speed of rollouts of changes to the algorithm and, you know, ranking updates, however you think of those as a, as a thing, certainly does feel like the momentum behind that has taken a bit of a step change in, in recent times. How have you found that as kind of like being, you know, on those kind of areas of the analysis and SEO and kind of that process. Is, is that different? Is that a, a, a pattern of behavior that, you know, a pattern of behavior is not the right word, but you know, there's kind of, you know, is there something that's happening? Is it, and how is that manifesting itself in your day-to-day -day life? And how are you responding to that? If that is a, a, a real phenomena? <laughs> I mean, from my perspective, the, the pace of algorithms say, seems to be way beyond anything that sort of we've seen in the last decade, really. If you look at sort of August to December last year, there's what, six or seven different updates. Um, and it just becomes more and more difficult to actually pull out useful insights from individual algorithm updates, I find. So when we're looking at, uh, say, one rolls out one week, and then you've got another one the next week, and another one the month after, you're no longer really able to get a clean before and after picture. So you have to sort of piece it together and there's loads of sort of tools and data that you can use, but actually the, the core underlying issue is just like what caused what um, with algorithm updates. I think the value in sort of specific tools like Systrix and monitoring that, but also building your own sort of custom reporting is, is really in that being able to sort of pull things apart and say, actually we've seen impact here because of mm. this. And I suppose it's having that, like system in place before there's a dramatic shift might be you know the, you're reaping the rewards of that to an extent aren't you where it's like if you're kind of going blimey there's been a, an update we've had a dramatic it could be positive even and like that, that would be good as well but it can be like in either direction and you're kind of then trying to conjure up the the tools to do that whereas if you've got a kind of like well 
were able to understand this kind of impact. You know, is it, is it different to be working kind of in a in-house in that kind of organization? Is it the cadence of that slightly different? Are you, you know, obviously you've got substantial SEO you know, resource there to tap into. Are you treat is that as a bigger deal as it might be in an agency? Is it different? Are you kind of having to like respond in a similar way or is the, the, the pace slightly different? You can be a bit more long-termist in that kind of, you know, yeah, in a more enterprise space, it's a bit more uh, different uh, in in the sense that when when we have some sort of algorithmic change impacting our uh, growth and visibility, then um, convincing the stakeholders and showing some uh, you know um, uh, impact of the the update and also putting together a case that changing this to this might get us into a more visibility space or something. So that it's it's a slightly different. Uh, game yeah no i bet i think it yeah there's it's a probably probably and i think this was alluding to what matt was getting to is that if the frequency of those changes are such that it becomes hard to kind of go well this update was responsible for this change actually if you're kind of going that it's a constant you know the only change is constant or no constant is it well you know what i'm getting at there that that, that phrase uh but may, yeah maybe that's good and maybe that's actually the better way like hopefully a, a sort of a better way of approaching the challenge, right? So it's a kind of a what's what can I understand about our business, about our market, about our sector now um, that's going to still that's going to lead to an insight and action that's going to deliver value, not just for the current update, not for the next update, but for you know the the direction that search is heading. Well, that's fantastic. It gave me a really good sense of kind of some of the challenges that you, you you're dealing with and some of the opportunities are there. And hopefully that's inspired people to, you know, maybe pick up on some of the tools that you've mentioned or kind of yeah, reassure them that this is something that they might be wanting to look, looking into. One thing I always kind of do to sort of wrap up these um, conversations that we have that, you know, I find incredibly useful is that, you know, there's going to be resources out there. There's going to be maybe a tool or a news website or a, a newsletter or a book or whatever it is that um you know might be one that's recently helped someone out so i always ask my guests um to make a recommendation really so we can drop those in the show notes and um you know uh, make reference to those but any the beer particular like things that you'd say go check this out if you want to you know do your job a little bit better and it's an open-ended thing right it could be you know really closely denied uh, connected to seo analysis or it could be completely different anything that immediately springs to mind when i throw you that random left field question yeah, sure. Um, yeah. I think in terms of the analysis part, I would I would highly recommend people to get get into some uh, basic stuff at least to start with, like basic Excel for functions, etc. Um, also, uh, I think with the rise of this artificial intelligence and all these things, I I would highly recommend people to also start using ChatGPT for some growth hacking stuff. Uh, I I remember back in the days when, like a couple of years ago or something. Uh, if I'm working on a very complex uh, formula or something uh, to, to to sketch a very uh, clear picture out of the data, I would spend a couple of days doing that. But now it just takes me an hour or maybe a couple of hours uh, because I can I can use that uh, artificial intelligence. Yeah, I mean, I think that it surprised me that kind of, yeah, that that's the, yeah, that as a tool to achieve the things you wanted to do and the kind of speeding up of that, which hopefully allows you to do that. So yeah, it's amazing what these large language models are capable of doing in terms of yeah making things that perhaps might have been an hour job, a minute job, a day long job, a you know an hour job. And I think that's you know potentially really exciting in terms of like making you know allowing us as marketers to sort of spend the time on the stuff that we enjoy the most and that we can add the most value and like, i'm quite optimistic about this stuff in a way that i think perhaps not absolutely everyone is but yeah and matt how about yourself in terms of things that you'd recommend people go and check out i mean uh, same sort of thing the the yeah. fundamentals are where you can sort of apply them to anything like if you can build up that groundwork of skills in sort of understanding data being able to process it that's that's what's going to deliver value for years and years to come. So something like uh, Ben Collins's blog online is great. He does loads of stuff around Google Sheets and formulas and sort of breaking it down in a way that isn't horrendously intimidating and also then applying it to really useful use cases. Um, he's at the sort of forefront of the game in terms of updates and changes. So yeah, definitely worth checking out. But even in other spaces, it's it's finding that person who's really into it, does that one specialist thing, whether it's on Twitter, blogs, um, yeah, just follow them and, and see what they get up to. Sounds fantastic. And in terms of keeping in touch with yourself or up to speed on your work, Matt, how would people kind of keep abreast of what you're up to or things you've got, you know, coming down the pipeline if they wanted to um, keep keep a bit more kind of, yeah, on your radar, as it were? Definitely. Easiest way is probably going to be Twitter. So at Matt Greenwood GS. Uh, yeah, 
don't use it enough, but definitely the best way to get in touch. Fantastic. And yourself, Nabil? Yeah, I am also active on Twitter and LinkedIn. So if anybody has to discuss anything or even throw a big challenge in my way, I'm more than welcome to, to look at it. Fantastic. And I, yeah, you're both coming and speaking at um, the forthcoming April uh, Brighton SEA. So obviously I'm hugely excited about that. I mean, vested interest there and I think they're going to be amazing. But yeah, I think it's a really interesting topic and it is one of these, yeah, if you can delve into the presentations or blog posts or I, the, the one thing I think that is incredibly like pleasing um, to me as a member of the kind of digital marketing community is quite how generous people are in terms of sharing their experience, sharing their approaches, sharing their tools that they've created or, you know, sheets that they've produced. Um, and, you know, that might not be the perfect tool or method or approach for every individual, but there's so much that we can learn from the collective sharing of experience. So, um, yeah, it's a hugely exciting world to be part of. So, yeah, thanks very much for joining us um, today, uh, Matt and Nabil. Um, we'll, there's the show notes as well. So we'll include links to their LinkedIn and Twitter and all of that sort of stuff as well, if you want to uh, get in contact with them via that means. And yeah, thanks again for listening to the show. We've, I've had a really good time. I hope you've picked up some new exciting things that have left you motivated and you know keen to do your job in a slightly better way than you did before. So thanks very much, everybody, and see you again soon. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Internet Marketing Podcast, produced by the team behind Brighton SEO the world's largest specialist digital marketing conference covering SEO, PPC, paid social, web analytics, and content marketing. If you want to find out more about us and the show, you can check out the website, internetmarketingpodcast.org. And if you've um, not already subscribed to the show, you should hit that subscribe button. And can I ask a favor if you are subscribed and you're enjoying the show, can you leave us a review wherever you're watching or listening to the show? And if you want to get in touch, uh, become a guest on the show, or just generally feedback about what we're doing, you can always email me. That's kelvin at brightonseo.com. So K-E-L-V-I-N at brightonseo.com. Or of course, you can contact me on social media. So at LinkedIn or Twitter, uh, my username's R. Kelvin Newman. See you soon.